Welcome back to the part 2 of Bold Full Game Creation without any code using the Bold Visual Scripting tool in Unity. In previous video we showed you how to create the player controls, how to set up the scene, how to create the shooting mechanism, how to create a super unit for the cooldown for both the shooting and spawning the enemies, how to create an enemy spawner and in today's video we'll show you how to cre create the events in Bolt, events like when we hit an enemy, how to increase the score on the screen, and how to create the game over loop. So let's get started. Just select any game object or any prefab, then in the tag section, click add tag. We need to add three new tags because we already have the player. We, add, we need to add the enemy tag a wall tag because we need to create a ground for the level and also player bullet tag then we create destroy node to destroy the bullet when we hit an enemy oh and i forgot to add the branch node so we only destroy the game object when the tags matches we created the tags but we didn't assign them so let's select the enemy prefab and assign the enemy tag to it then select the bullet and assign player bullet tag to it now let's create the ground of the level using the square sprite just uh, increase its scale on the x and change its color if you want and uh, don't forget to change the tag to wall now let's get back to the enemy graph and decide what will happen when it gets hit by the bullet or by the wall so same for the bullet bullet let's create an on trigger enter 2D and check if we are colliding with a bullet or with the wall first then if we are colliding with the wall we destroy the enemy game object we repeat the process for when we hit the bullet so we create another on trigger enter 2D event and we check if we are colliding with the bullet then we destroy the enemy game object and we have two cases here because when we hit the ground, we went. We want to end the game and show the game over text and repeat or reload the level. Now let's go to the scene controller and create a custom event which take one argument which is an integer represents the score from killing an enemy. Then go back to the enemy graph and create custom event trigger name it update score make sure that the name is same as the event we created in the scene controller which is update score and make it passing one argument which will be an integer representing the score for killing an enemy and then place it before destroying the enemy game object in the path of hitting the player bullet then add a new integer node and link it to the argument zero now we need to create uh, a scene variable score which can be accessed by any other element or game object in the scene and simply let's do the calculations for updating the score we need to get the same score and add to it the score for killing an enemy which is passed by the custom event trigger in the enemy graph it will be passed here the 100 then we add it to the score variable then we update the score variable by setting its value the, its new value but we missed one thing the event trigger is located on the enemy while the event itself is located on the scene controller so we need to tell the enemy that the event we want to trigger is located on the scene controller so let's create a new scene variable name it scene manager or scene controller set the type to game object then drag the scene controller to the value drag that scene manager to the enemy graph and link it to the custom event trigger because by default the trigger will try to find an event exist on the same graph and that will solve any issue and now as we can see the score is updated and we can see the results in the graph 
Now let's create the text that will show the score on the screen. So right to click on the hierarchy, UI text, and let's name the canvas to UI. Then place the text to be in the top middle of the screen, change the color to white and make sure that the alignment is to middle. Then add flow machine component and create a new macro named score. All what we need now is to create a custom event here. Let's name it show score and it will take one arg argument which is the score passed from the scene controller. So let's name the event show score. And to choose a score, we only need one node called string concat, which combines two values into one string. Then we get the value from the event, which is argument zero, and we combine it with a string node to write score in the beginning. And then we assign the results to the text inside our UI text by creating text dot text set node. Now we need to trigger the show score event from the scene controller. Let's create custom event trigger. Let's name it the same show score. Then we need to create a new scene variable to refer to the text game object because the event located there. So let's create scene a variable, name it score and set the type to game object and the value to the text game object which holds the event. Drag the scene variable into the graph, then link it to the show score custom event trigger and then pass the value from score to the argument zero. And that's all what we needed to show the score on the screen. Let's hit play and see how the score will increase on the scene. And yay, we can see the score getting updated while we shoot some enemies. See how simple it is to do it with the visual scripting. Let's do the final task, which is if the enemy hit the ground, we need to show game over text on the screen and then reload the scene to complete the loop of the game. Now let's create and animate the game over text. Right click on the canvas, uh, UI text, and let's set it to the center of the scene by clicking on the rect transform, holding Alt and Shift and click on the bottom right icon to expand it to full screen, then set it to set the alignment to middle in both horizontally and vertically. Change the color maybe to red or let's keep it white, it's good. Then change the text if you have fonts uh, in your project. Let's set the size to 120. Rename the game object to game over instead of text. Then from the animation window, let's create an animation. Name it game over and hit record. We just wanna uh, change the scale from zero to one. So the game over text fades in the screen like this. Now, if we hit play, we will see the game over animation keeps looping endlessly and also starts when we start the game. So let's solve those two issues. We can easily solve the looping issue by going to the animation folder to the game over animation we created and untick the loop time. So that means we will only show the animation once. The second issue can be solved easily also by going to the animator window and creating new state and make it as default. Then go to the game over game object and set the scale to zero because we don't need to say, see it when we start the game. And that's all for the game over game object. Let's do the graphs now. Now let's go to the enemy graph and create custom event trigger. Let's name it game over. And the event itself will be on the scene controller, which we name it the scene manager in the scene variables. So let's drag the scene manager game object and link it to the 
custom event trigger, then place it before destroy in the pass when we hit the wall. That means when we hit the, the enemy hits the ground, we trigger the game over. Then let's go to the scene controller or scene manager and create custom event. Make sure it has the same name game over and all what we do here is just trigger or play the animator. So just create animator.play node which has state name and we know the state name is game over since we created that animation. So fill the state name with game over text. But the animator is not located on the scene manager, it's on the game over game object. So let's create a new scene variable, name it game over, set the type to game object, then drag the game over game object to the value. Now we can drag this variable to tell th that the animator is located on the game over game object. Now go back to the animation window and copy the last frame for additional seconds so we can see the game over text for one second after it fades in so we don't reload the level immediately. Then cre create an animation event. Click on the event then click the function selection. We will not find the trigger animation event here because we didn't add the macro to it nor we have any animation trigger event inside it so let's cl uh, click on the game over game object and add component flow machine then create a new macro let's name it game over now create animation event node and write in the string game over because we will name the event game over then link it to the scene manager load scene node and write the current scene name. Our scene name is bold game. So copy that there. And also make sure that the build contains the current level. Because if we don't have it, the, the game will fail to load, reload the level. So go to file, build settings and add open scenes. That will add the current open scene there. Now go back to the game over game object and click on the event from the animation window. In the inspector now we can find the trigger animation event. Let's name it game over, same as in the graph. And that's all. When we hit play, an enemy will hit the ground. That will trigger the game over event, which will tell the scene manager to trigger or start the animation from the game over game object that will trigger the game over event and will reload the scene. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next one next week. For special thanks to our supporters on Patreon, Anton, Sangwook Su, Joshua Kratoshville, Little Fox, Parker Nelson, Jackie Mar, GR, Giacomo, Mariani, Falcon Jazz, Just Lefever, Pedro Transong, James Valentine, Koju Opuni, Rick Jabowski, Jack Crystal, and Mohammed Aiden. Till next video, see you soon.